You didn't do the lip thing on the last <laughs> one. <laughs> All right. Um, so we've got new vocabulary words. We just talked about osteo, 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 sta, which means a town, but I also mean, think it means center of the city. We've got uh, new new verbs, a bunch of new verbs. Afik netlai, afik samai, afik kame, a secondarist middle. It's a deponent verb. And then afigmai is the perfect of it. It's an intransitive verb. So it means to arrive or to reach a place, to come to a place. So it takes prepositions for the place that you arrive at. Um, very common word in Greek prose. The next verb is day, the verb to be necessary. It is necessary, an impersonal verb, verb, and it tells you that it also means there is need as well as it is necessary. Um, and the principal parts are day, de ese, de ese, aorist. Okay. We've got the word for healer, translates the word iatros, iatrua, a second declension masculine noun, as doctor, which is an exaggeration, means a healer. There are no doctors in the scientific sense in, um, in ancient Greece. Um, there's the verb kmi, gives you only two principal parts, kmi and kesamai, and the feature of it, which means to lie or be placed, be set. As we said, I think it's well to think of it as, and it functions in Greek as the passive of tithene. All right? Mm -hmm. Then there's the verb trepo, which means to turn, and, and uh, oh, <laughs> Sorry about the lights out. Okay, so we were talking about trepo, that means turn. And then the book says um, that the aorist passive in the middle mean turn oneself. I'm not so sure. But anyway, um, look at the principal parts of this verb. They're fun. It's trepo, trepso, etrepsa. And then in the middle it becomes a, a uh, second aorist, etrapamein. Okay? Perfect is tetrafon. We have an aspirated perfect and the change of the vowel in the stem from E to O. And then tetramai from tetrapmai. So terp, trep becomes trop when you lose the vowel. So that's the zero grade. So you've got trep, trof, and tra. Okay? And etrapane or etrephthane. Etrapane is the old aorist passive with the same zero grade of the root. Not, not originally terp, it becomes trap, okay? And then a trap thing is a renewed one. So it, it, it's important to distinguish that from the verb trefo, but uh, I don't think you'll ever confuse it. The forms don't overlap. Um, okay, uh, next word is the verb phino, very common verb in Greek, a really important one. Um, that means to show in the active transitive sense or cause something to appear and in the middle which is extremely common it means to appear or seem okay so the principal parts are going to get rid of fino fano contract future ephena pephena pephas my and the funane aorist passive is common there's also an aorist passive attested to funthane it's a noble form um, so the, the beautiful thing about it is uh, pointed out in the book that you, you, with this verb you can have either an infinitive construction or a supplementary participle. So the example it gives is finitai kakos enai is on page 572 and finitai kakos on. You want to write them down? Yeah. Finitai kakos enai. A close look at these. And finitai kakos on. So in, in the first example, finitai kakos ani, you've got finitai, the middle form, with an infinitive, complementary infinitive. And that means he appears to be evil. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, expressing skepticism. Okay? And in the other one, finitai kakos on, means he is apparent being evil. In other, in other words, it is apparent that he is evil, okay? If you wish, the differences in meaning of the two constructions are one, one the, the verb to be is existential, and the other it's copulative. 
Okay. Copy Lutheran. Yes. So as a you know that the verb to be X is that is an elephant. Mm -hmm. That's the copulative use. That an elephant exists. Mm -hmm. That's the existential. Okay. Yeah. You called me on it. Good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think that's it, right? I think that's it. Yep. Bye bye. bye. <laughs>